Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and my friend Daniel came over, and we were just looking at his beautiful 20,000 mile Kenny Bell Mach 1, and it had a little bit of a sound, it almost sounded like an exhaust leak that we were looking for. But as we started looking around, we saw that the AC clutch was slightly moving even when it was uh, disengaged, and it was making that tapping sound that almost sounded like an exhaust leak. Uh, we turned on the compressor, and the compressor starts, and when we turned on the AC, and uh, that seemed to make the sound go away. Uh, Daniel also had his exhaust tip that kept coming loose, so we just removed it, and we saw that where it bolts together here, it was all the way maxed out, and we were hoping we could just pick up a little bit of hardware to work that out, and we ended up putting a shim in it. Uh, he also had uh, a bracket that was hanging down, and so we were thinking we'd be able to just twist it sideways, but in the end, that subframe that comes through here, there's a subframe support, and uh, that was uh, ultimately in the way. So while we were under here, we're just kind of looking around for any other exhaust leaks. All the other joints seemed really good. There was no exhaust coming out of them, so you can usually put a sheet of paper or your hand under here and feel if it's uh, leaking any. But this car has all kinds of upgrades to it. It's really neat to see. Um, even just looking at the wheels, you can see these big uh, studs that are coming out. Nice. You bought it with 2,000 miles on it. So, a long time ago, or was it just preserved? It, it was just preserved. Hey, you bought it like a couple years ago with 2,000 miles on it. So we ran over to the hardware store to pick up a few nuts and bolts, and uh, they were closed. It wasn't. It was still pretty early in the morning, so we went next door to get some food. And you know, we really take a lot for granted here. Look at all this beautiful food that's out, uh, and we just, I think, take it all for granted when we should be very grateful for everything. And with the current situation, you can see they have to box all these donuts individually, which is kind of a waste of plastic. But uh, anyway, uh, hardware store opened up, and we got some lock washers and some other things. And uh, then just headed back and just really enjoyed driving the car around on a beautiful morning. And by the way, this is him letting me drive his car around. Very nice of him. So we stopped by Justin SVT's house just to show him some of his other cars, his Blue Mach 1, which uh, was at the meet, his 10th anniversary Cobra, his competition orange Cobra, and so just hung around there for a minute, looked at the new engine and transmission that uh, Justin's putting in the uh, other GT here, and he has this all torn apart and had removed the front timing cover and had all of it opened up and so this engine will probably come out pretty soon and we saw these beautiful B-17s flying around, a B-17 and a B-25, uh, 4th of July weekend, what a, what a treat to see them, beautifully polished and uh, just a tribute to America. So we jacked the car up and just kind of looked around and fortunately I was trying to swing that exhaust mount over uh, the, the clamp and it just hits the subframe of the aftermarket piece, so we're not able to really do anything with that. But uh, we were able to mess around with a few other things. And uh, so you can see this huge support that comes all the way through here and meets at the rear axle. And it actually deletes the upper control arms, which is pretty interesting. But with that, the mount, you know, the joint here for the exhaust twists and it hits that bar so you can't really get it straight. And so it's been scraping on the ground. Uh, we then got the exhaust all figured out here. We just put a shim in here uh, because to have the tip slid back to right where we wanted, it was uh, not getting a good clamp. But anyway, you can see all the work that was done on this car. And again, no upper control arms. Uh, very interesting setup here. So yeah, no upper control arms. Instead, it just has the bar on the bottom that attaches here at the differential and follows all the way up to the front and then connects to the subframes on each side. So. Really cool setup, a lot of work done to this car. 
So we will be taking it into an exhaust shop pretty soon to add our bung for the wideband that we'll install. And at that time we're just going to have them remove this clamp that's twisted sideways and weld it closed. Because as you can see, it's sideways so it's scraping on the ground and you can't put it flush because it's hitting that uh, new subframe uh, support that goes underneath there. And so then at that time we'll also have them weld the tips on because uh, it's this side of the cap back's just uh, short enough that the tip's almost falling off when you have it where you want it. So we added that shim for now. So anyway, that was today's adventure. Happy 4th of July to everybody and have a great weekend.